morning ladies and gentlemen as right now we have more than 300 participants here so let's start our webinar today so i hope everyone is doing great during this challenging time as provided that there are more cases increase in cambodia but it is a blessed for us that we have been vaccinated and we really hope that this COVID-19 era will be over soon. So once again, thank you for attending our live webinar on tax audit and proper accounting record, which is designed to support our audience on accounting record and update on tax audit regulation to prepare for tax audit in this changing trends. By the way, I'm Lim Ji Yong, membership executive of KIPA, and I will be the MC throughout the time course of this webinar today. Before we get started, I want to cover some housekeeping rules here. So first, our participants will not be able to speak or raise their question directly or verbally to our speaker. Instead, you will be able to write your questions into our Q&A chat room. And if you encounter any technical issue, please also drop your question in there our team will address it immediately. After the webinar, you will receive feedback form from our team via email. So the form will be open for only three days only. And after you completed it, you will be able to download the slide presentation slot accordingly. And you will also receive the then attend this webinar within 10 working days after completing the feedback form. So I would like to guide you to our agenda. Today it is an honor to have Mrs. Samdali keep joined with us. And we are also joined by two experts from Fee and Associate to come and share useful insights and update on text. So the first speaker is we will meet Mr. Ranvidya. Currently, he is a senior tax manager of Fee and Associate and has over eight years of experience in tax field and in leading company in Cambodia. And he will walk us through the topic tax audit update. And the second speaker. We will meet Mr. Song Chan Thol, working more than 10 years of experience in tax compliance, advisory, and litigation in various industry. And currently, he is also a tax director of Fee and Associate, and he will address on the topic proper accounting record to prepare for tax audit. So without any further delay, and our time is tied to, I would like to welcome and give this floor to Mrs. Sawadali, Acting Executive Director of KIPA, to give her welcome speech. So please welcome Ms. Dali. Thank you. Thank you, Dion. Um, very good morning, KIPA members, ladies and gentlemen. I hope everyone is safe during um, these challenging times. I'm Dalisa Wood, uh, Acting Executive uh, <coughs> Director of KIPA. I'm uh, very pleased uh, to be here with you all today. And on behalf of KIPA, uh, I would like to warmly welcome and thank to our speakers and uh, participants for attending uh, the live webinar on the topic of uh, tax audit and proper accounting records. Besides that, I would like to offer my uh, gratitude to uh, Fee and Associate Co-LTD for your collaboration by sharing insightful tax experts uh, for this webinar. Um, you know, uh, today I'm so excited uh, to see uh, many participants here nearly um, 400. Uh, before kick off uh, the session, may I take uh, this opportunity uh, to brief you uh, some about KIPA 
And I also have uh, an exciting news for those uh, who wish to uh, set up the accounting and auditing firm in Cambodia. PIPA uh, stands for Kampuji Institute of Certified Public Accountants and Auditor. Uh, it's established by um, accounting and auditing law in um, 2002, and uh, subsequently by uh, the new uh, law on accounting and auditing in 2016. The more important thing uh, is that uh, KIPA is the only national uh, accountancy body in Cambodia. KIPA is um, recognized by uh, our uh, regulators in Cambodia, such as um, Accounting and Auditing Regulator, AAR, that uh, former um, NEC, and um, SIGSIS, Security and Exchange uh, Regulator of Cambodia, uh, NBC, National Bank of Cambodia, and also uh, GDT, that uh, uh, I hope uh, you all know, uh, which means that uh, once you become a GIPA member, you are eligible to apply for and obtain this um, license uh, from uh, this regulator to uh, provide the audit service to uh, audit the listed companies, uh, banks, and um, microfinance institutions, insurance companies, and uh, also get a tax license, uh, tax uh, agent certificates, uh, respectively. Uh, is also a primary member of the uh, ASEAN Federation of Accountants that we call uh, AFA, and is an uh, associate member of the uh, IFEX, International Federation of uh, Accountants. And um, our vision is to be a uh, recognized and trusted accountancy body in Cambodia uh, by 2024. And we aim to uh, uphold uh, public interest by regulating and educating the professional accountants to um, the highest professional uh, standard and code of ethics uh, and maintaining the confidence of uh, the public in the profession. Uh, Tim, next slide. Okay, so now it's time uh, for me to share uh, the good news uh, for joining with us that uh, Gipa have on the screen. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, related to uh, membership category and benefits uh, which uh, you are uh, eligible and entitled to apply for. KIPA uh, have uh, two uh, main type of uh, membership. One is uh, individual member and another one is a uh, firm member referred to entity. And for individual member, uh, we have five categories of membership, uh, which is uh, the first one is active member as uh, auditor, uh, refer to auditor who set up the accounting firm um, and provide uh, both uh, accounting and auditing services. Second is um, active member as accountant. Uh, for those uh, who practice accounting, and provide accounting services. Uh, for affiliate member and associate member, uh, refer to those who uh, allow to do a certain scope of uh, accounting services. And uh, the last one for individual is a student member. And uh, please uh, feel free to um, contact our uh, KIPA secretariat team for detailed information which category that you are uh, qualified for. Moreover, uh, you can see the minimum benefits on um, the right hand side of uh, our slide for being our member, such as uh, recognition by uh, various uh, regulators, uh, as I mentioned earlier, and 
um, recognize, uh, recognition by a uh, public and uh, you are uh, eligible to apply for a tax agent and also can join um, many seminars uh, and networking events. Also, um, CPD um, program that we have a continued professional um, development uh, program. And uh, also uh, updates on uh, law and uh, other standards related to accounting and auditing, and also um, other regulation uh, <coughs> related to accounting profession. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, we also have uh, this one for a uh, firm member, that uh, which is um, accounting and auditing firm. For auditing firm here, can uh, provide both uh, accounting and auditing services, uh, while accounting firm can uh, provide a limited scope only uh, on uh, accounting services. Next slide, please. So under uh, the new law on accounting and auditing, uh, only KIPA members are eligible to apply for accounting and auditing license. Uh, it uh, means that uh, if you wish to set up the accounting and auditing firm in Cambodia, you shall register to be a KIPA member first and then uh, apply for licensing from uh, accounting and auditing regulators. Okay. Uh, before I pass the, the floor to our uh, guest speaker, I encourage all of you uh, and all accountants in business, uh, CFO and uh, lecturers uh, to apply for member. And should you need uh, any um, assistance or more information about uh, KIPA as well as membership requirement, uh, please contact our secretary team through the information on uh, this slide. Um, thank you for your kind attention. Thank you so much, Mrs. Sawad Nali, for your warm welcome and this exciting news for our participant today. So for the interested audience, or if you have any question about GIPA, please kindly contact to GIPA Secretariat directly. You will provide you the contact info also at the end of this webinar. So let's move on to the next agenda. I would like to give this floor to Mr. Virya to share with us on the topic tax audit update. So please welcome Mr. Vidya. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, thank you, Young, for uh, giving me the chance to uh, uh, do the present here. So uh, first of all, I would like to uh, express my thanks uh, to all participants and uh, say, uh, Good morning to everyone for uh, attending this uh, webinar. So uh, for me, I am pleased to uh, do the sharing regarding a very hot uh, tax matter in Cambodia, which is uh, tax audit. And uh, I can see that uh, there are many participants uh, today because uh, everyone is uh, very interested in the uh, tax audit uh, matter in Cambodia. So, uh, next slide, please. Uh, okay. So, uh, for for my part, uh, tax audit, uh, I will uh, walk you through uh, on the four points. First one, uh, I will uh, share what is the uh, tax audit and why uh, all companies in Cambodia have uh, the uh, tax audit. And uh, secondly, the types and procedure of uh, tax audit. Third, penalties, which might impose in uh, the tax audit process. And uh, the last one is the hot issue that uh, most companies face during the tax audit process. Next slide, please. 
Okay, so uh, the first point is uh, regarding a uh, tax audit. What is the tax audit? If uh, our participant ha has the uh, experience regarding the tax audit, uh, he might know what is the tax audit. But for those who never experienced with the tax audit, might have the question, what is the tax audit? So before I uh, provide the definition of the uh, tax audit process, I would like to share that um, in Cambodia, when you invest or you uh, set up a company, you will be uh, you will declare the tax under the sales declaration tax, meaning you can declare whatever you want. You earn one hundred, you can declare ten. You you spend uh, ten, you can declare eight, whatever you want. But uh, during uh, the tax audit process, the tax auditor will come to check whether you declare uh, correctly or not. And uh, they will impose penalty if you under declare or you over claim uh, uh, expense uh, for for uh, during your your business transaction. So this is uh, why uh, the uh, GDT conduct the tax audit on the companies or investor in Cambodia. So the first point regarding the tax audit is the purpose. The purpose of the tax audit is to uh, cross check whether the taxpayer who are the sell declarations uh, comply with tax uh, regulation or not, meaning uh, the utility want to uh, check whether the taxpayer declare the tax correctly. They pay tax properly under the tax uh, regulation in Cambodia. And if the tax auditor find out you did not pay or declare tax properly, they will impose penalty on uh, the in compliance with the tax regulation. And during the tax audit process, the uh, you will might have uh, you might have the question of what the tax auditor do during their uh, uh, conduct of the tax audit. So during the tax audit process, the tax auditor normally review your accounting record. They review your financial statements. They review your tax return that you submitted to the tax authority and supporting uh, agreements and uh, supporting calculation. Like uh, you have the uh, sale record, purchase record, uh, tax on sale reworking, withholding tax working, and so on. And other documentation like a uh, rental agreement, agreement with your supplier. And Lastly, uh, who will uh, conduct the uh, tax audit? So the uh, tax authority will conduct your tax uh, will conduct the tax audit on your company. Uh, consists of a uh, enterprise audit department, like tax payer department or tax branch. So this uh, tax authority uh, depends on the type of tax audit. So uh, I will show you who will uh, uh, when when the enterprise audit department conduct the tax audit and when the like tax payer conduct the uh, tax audit. Next slide, please. Okay. So uh, now we already know what uh, are the uh, tax audit and the purpose and what document the tax auditor uh, check. So uh, the next one is uh, the uh, type of tax audit. So in Cambodia, if you take a look at uh, Prakash number 270 issued by the Ministry of uh, Economy and Finance, there are two types of tax audit. First one is desk audit. Second one is side visits audit. So what, what are the difference between these two types of tax audit? The first one, desk audit. You can take a, uh, you can see that the word desk that's here means uh, you work on the uh, desk or the table in the office. So this type of tax audit, the tax auditor will conduct uh, this tax audit at their office, meaning they will not uh, visit your office, they will not uh, have a meeting with you at your office, or they will not uh, take a look at your factory or warehouse. They just uh, review your uh, tax return, which they think that uh, there is uh, abnormality with the tax declaration, 
or they uh, pick up some uh, high risk item in your tech return. So in this uh, tech audit process, normally the uh, tech authority will issue you the notice of uh, uh, all the letter require you to provide the explanation on particular item that you declare in your tech return with the um, supporting document and explanation in uh, writing. And this tax audit normally uh, conduct within uh, 12 months after uh, tax return submission. So for example, when you submit the uh, annual tax return uh, in tax on income for 2020, so the tax auditor might conduct this kind of uh, tax uh, audit within one year, meaning uh, it might be a uh, start from uh, March 2021 uh, to uh, March 2022. So within uh, 12 months after you uh, submit your uh, tax return. So during the process, you uh, just submit the document and provide explanation in writing regarding the items that are picked up by the tax authority uh, for you to uh, explain. And this kind of that's, uh, audit normal is conducted by a uh, tech brands or the uh, tax auditor from like your large tech payer department. And the length of this kind of tech audits under Prakash uh, 270 uh, is uh, up to three months after all documents are submitted to the tax auditor. And the second tax audit type is a side visit uh, uh, audit. So you can see the word uh, side visit meaning the tax auditor will uh, go to uh, uh, take a look at your uh, office, will take a look at your factory or warehouse to uh, observe your operation and uh, uh, the business transaction at your uh, office. And normally they uh, review your, uh, it, it, it is, uh, normally they, they will review your whole business uh, operations they will uh, review your accounting record, tax returns, and workings, legal document, and other documents. So it is uh, this kind of tax audit scope is a bit uh, bigger than the desk audit. Because of the desk audit, uh, you have to provide explanation on uh, particular items that were picked up by the tax auditor only. But for side visit audit, uh, you will, uh, the tax auditor will review uh, uh, in a broader scope during the process. For the side visit audit, uh, consists of a limited tax audit and comprehensive uh, tax audit. And I will uh, uh, share with you when the uh, GDT conduct limited tax audit and when the GDT conduct a comprehensive tax audit and what are the difference. Uh, next slide, please. So, uh, under the podcast number 270, the limited tax audit is uh, conduct, normally conducted by uh, like tech payers department or tech branch. So, if uh, you, you are a like tech payer, you uh, submit and declare your tax return with like tech payer department. Or if you are medium uh, taxpayer, you submit and declare your tax with the tech brands, for example, like Don't Pink Tech Brand or Chamkamon Tech Brands. So uh, when the GDT conduct the uh, limit tax audit, they will assign the tax auditor from those tech brands to uh, conduct uh, the limited tax audit on your company. And under that uh, broadcast, uh, the GDT also uh, specify uh, the period for the uh, tax uh, limit tax audit as well. So the question is uh, when the uh, LTD, I can uh, use the abbreviation, uh, like a payer department, LTD or tax brand normally conduct uh, the uh, limit tax audit uh, for the uh, current tax year or the year uh, before current tax year, for example, now uh, 2021. So the like tech payer department or tax brand 
can conduct limited audit for 2020 or some months uh, for 2021. And during the limit tax audit, the question is uh, what kind of tax that uh, the tax auditor normally uh, cross-check and uh, review. So uh, under the uh, broadcast number 270, the tax auditor review uh, all types of tax except uh, TOI, meaning a uh, tax on income. So in this kind of tax audit process, the uh, tax auditor review your tax declaration and they uh, will impose a penalty only on the monthly tax and other tax besides tax on income. However, they also review your uh, annual uh, income tax to uh, cross-check whether you declare uh, properly during the monthly tax uh, declaration or not. They, they do the cross-checks. And the limit tax audit is not the final uh, tax audit, meaning uh, if the uh, large tax payer department or tax branch conduct the tax limit tax audit on your company for 2020, in the following or in the future, the GDT will conduct another tax audit on your company, which is called comprehensive tax audit. So, the one uh, single uh, uh, period will be subject to tax audit uh, twice, which is limit tax audit and comprehensive tax audit. So I would like to uh, uh, continue with a uh, comprehensive tax audit. Uh, the comprehensive tax audit is conducted by Enterprise Audit Department of the uh, General Department of Taxation. And the period of this kind of tax audit is uh, within three years before the current year. For example, now 2021. So the um, Enterprise Audit Department, EAD, normally conduct a comprehensive tax audit up to uh, 2020, 2019, and 2018. So within three years uh, before the current year, they might conduct a comprehensive tax audit for 2020. 19 or 18. Or uh, within the past five years or more than five years with clear evidence of tax avoidance. So uh, if they uh, find out that uh, you uh, avoid tax with uh, clear evidence, the EAD might also conduct the uh, comprehensive tax audit beyond uh, five years on your company. And the tax that will be uh, reviewed by the Enterprise Audit Department it is uh, all type of tax. So it includes monthly tax return and also uh, annual income tax during the uh, tax audit uh, process. And you might have the question that uh, your company might be subject to a tax audit twice for the same period which is limit tax audit and comprehensive tax audit. The question is, uh, if the enterprise audit department will reassess the same tax to limited tax audit or not? And if yes, uh, are you required to pay that penalty twice or, or only once? So under the uh, broadcast on tax uh, audit uh, process, when the uh, light tech payer impose particular tax, for example, a tax on salary, uh, reassess tax on salary during their conduct of limited tax audit. And then when the enterprise audit department come to conduct the comprehensive tax audit on your company, they also found out that uh, your company under declare or under paid a tax on salary. So they found uh, the same uh, mistake uh, during uh, their uh, uh, tax audit process for the same period. So under that broadcast, when you already paid the reassessed tax on salary in the limited tax audit uh, for 2020, you are not required to pay this uh, reassessed tax again uh, for the comprehensive tax audit for 2020. So uh, you, you, you will not uh, pay a tax uh, twice. 
And for comprehensive tax audit, uh, it is uh, considered final tax audit, meaning if the GDT conduct the comprehensive tax audit for 2020 uh, on your company, your company will not uh, subject to any other tax audit again in the future for 2020. However, under uh, law on taxation of Cambodia, uh, in the uh, one article, the GDT also mentioned that uh, they will also uh, conduct the another tax audit, special tax audit on your company after comprehensive tax audit if they have clear evidence that your company avoid the tax. But I can say that uh, in practice, uh, based on my experience, I never seen uh, this case uh, be before because uh, before you uh, close the comprehensive tax audit case, the uh, GDT uh, work very uh, carefully to uh, review everything and collect all uh, evidence to uh, uh, to reassess uh, tax. So in uh, practice, um, uh, for me personally, I never seen the GDT uh, uh, conduct another tax audit after comprehensive tax audit uh, yet. Okay, next slide, please. So uh, now you know uh, what are, what is the tax audit and what are the types of tax audit. And secondly, uh, you might have the question whether all companies in Cambodia are subject to this audit, subject to limit tax audit, comprehensive tax audit, or not. Or you also might have the question that, uh, for example, like uh, this health uh, situation, COVID uh, pandemic, you might have a question that uh, now all your staff are working uh, from home. So when the uh, GDT conduct the tax audit, uh, is it uh, okay for you to uh, uh, delay that uh, tax audit process or not? So under the broadcast uh, uh, to Seven zero and other tax uh, regulations. Uh, the GDT also provides the uh, right to the uh, taxpayer to delay the uh, tax audit process as well. Under that process, uh, a uh, tax audit process, the taxpayer allowed to request for the delay uh, of a conduct of tax audit verbally for the period uh, up to 10 days. So if you want to delay for 10 days, you can just uh, request, uh, do the verbal request by a uh, phone call or face-to-face uh, -face, uh, meeting with the tax auditor. However, if your request for the delay up to uh, from 10 days to uh, 30 days, you are required to submit a written request to the GDT. So you need to prepare a letter and submit that letter to the GDT administrative staff or tech uh, officer. And this is for the delay. And uh, the second point is uh, regarding the uh, exemption uh, from the tax audit process. So uh, as you are aware, uh, the GDT introduced uh, the uh, compliance status of the taxpayer in Cambodia, which they uh, classify taxpayer into three category. The first one is gold taxpayer. Secondly is silver and thirdly is bronze. And uh, Chantal will uh, specify and provide detail uh, why, uh, how you get a gold certificate, how you get a silver certificate and how the agility, uh, uh, what are the uh, criteria that the agility used to uh, 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 assess whether you are gold or silver. So for tax uh, audit purpose, the taxpayer who hold gold certificate normally exempt uh, from the death and limited tax audit. So you are not uh, subject to death or limited tax audit. And for comprehensive tax audit, your company will be subject to um, this kind of tax audit every two years. For example, uh, you might uh, subject to tax audit for 2018 and 19. And then after that, uh, you will be subject to tax audit again uh, for 2020, 21. 
which might be uh, conducted in uh, 2022. Mm. And the uh, last point is a uh, silver certificate. So under uh, that particular regulation, uh, the taxpayer who hold silver certificate uh, is exempt from tax audit and subject to limited tax audit once a year. So uh, you might be subject to limit tax audit uh, for 2018, 19, uh, 20, but uh, now 2021, you are not subject to limited tax audit yet. You need to wait uh, for uh, one year. And the uh, last one is comprehensive tax audit. Also, uh, your company is also subject to comprehensive tax audit every two years, similar to uh, those tech payers who hold a gold uh, certificate. So this is uh, the uh, delay and uh, exam uh, on the uh, tax audit uh, process. Next slide, please. And the next one is regarding the um, procedure of the uh, tax audit uh, process. So you will, uh, you might have a question of what uh, normally the taxpayer and the tax auditor do during this ta uh, the uh, tax audit uh, process. And what are the steps that uh, the taxpayer should uh, take during uh, the tax audit process. So normally uh, the Tax authority, either the uh, EAD or like taxpayer department or tax brand, when they uh, when the CAM come to conduct the tax audit, those guys normally uh, issue the notice of tax audit. So in that uh, notice of tax audit, uh, the tax auditor normally specify when they uh, conduct the tax audit on your company and for what uh, period. So after obtaining the uh, after obtaining the notification on tax audit, taxpayer is required to submit requested document based on the required document list attached to the notice of tax audit. So in that particular uh, list, uh, the tax auditor you can uh, submit the document based on uh, that uh, list. Uh, the document can be the tax return. Uh, including monthly and annual tax return, registration document, bank statement, financial statement, and other uh, uh, workings and uh, agreements and documentation. So after submitting those uh, initial document, the tax auditor normally review those uh, document and uh, information. Uh, during their review, they might have uh, other question and might also require you to submit additional document, which is a uh, uh, case by case uh, uh, basis, on the case by case basis. So after review everything and hold the meetings uh, to ask you or interview uh, a taxpayer, the GDT will uh, conclude that uh, you under pay tax uh, at which amount. So they will uh, normally issue the notice of tax reassessment specifying the types of tax that you <clears throat> underpaid and the penalty that you are required to uh, 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 pay for uh, the your underpayment of tax. So under the law on taxation and also the uh, tax audit practice, taxpayer also uh, have the right to protest against the notice of tax reassessment issued by the tax authority. So under that uh, regulation, if you disagree with the tax reassessment, you are allowed to submit objection letter within 30 days after obtaining the uh, notice of tax reassessment. And if you fail to submit the objection letter within 30 days, you are considered agreeing with the tax reassessment. So you, in the practice, as the uh, finance uh, manager, accounting manager, who take care of the tax matter of your company, you have to be very careful with the deadline uh, of the uh, objection letter. So you have to ensure that you submit the objection letter 
within 30 days if you disagree with the notice of tax reassessment. However, if you agree with the notice of tax reassessment and accept that you really underpaid tax, you can uh, process the uh, payment for the reassessed tax and add the penalties uh, by uh, the bank. And for the uh, protest uh, case, the tax auditor normally uh, review your objection letter after receiving uh, this type of, of letter. And then they will ask you to provide additional uh, document. They will hold uh, more meetings with you to further clarify your objection basis and uh, check your additional uh, document. So after this type of uh, process, the uh, GDT or the tax authority not, uh, will uh, issue the revised notice of tax reassessment. So for the revised of notice of tax reassessment, for some items, you might be agree with the uh, tax auditor. On the, on the other hand, some item you might not uh, uh, this uh, you might not uh, agree with the tax auditor. So you still uh, uh, want to protest against uh, for the revised notice of tax reassessment. So under the uh, law on tax reassessment, uh, you are allowed to submit another uh, objection letter against the revised notice of tax reassessment. To the uh, and asking the GDT to transfer this tax audit case to other tax uh, officer or authority also tax uh, authority uh, uh, teams, which is litigation bureau under the Department of uh, Legislation. So uh, the litigation bureau will act as the arbitrator to facilitate your objection with the uh, reassessment of the tax auditor. So they will uh, interview the tax auditor and review the uh, tax reassessment done by the tax auditor. At the same time, they also will interview you and they will uh, review your document, your uh, objection letter. So in conclusion, uh, the litigation bureau act as a arbitrator or as the judge in the, uh, at the court. Uh, to uh, uh, make the, the, the decision. So after they uh, review uh, everything, uh, the uh, litigation bureau will come up with the final decision of the GDT. They will uh, remain some uh, reassess tax the same, or they might also uh, remove uh, some uh, reassess tax from the notice tax reassessment. In practice, in some cases, the taxpayer might agree with the final decision uh, of the GDT, which is uh, uh, done by uh, litigation uh, bureau. In some cases, the taxpayer might, might, might not, uh, still might not uh, agree with the final decision. So in case that they agree with the final decision, they can uh, process the uh, tax payment to the uh, GDT uh, via the bank account. In another case that they still disagree with the GDT final uh, decision, they can submit another objection letter to the uh, Ministry of Economy and Finance requesting the uh, Ministry of Economy and Finance to uh, find solution for uh, this tax audit uh, uh, case. So under the uh, tax law, uh, if you still disagree with the final decision of the GDT, you can submit your objection letter to find a solution to the uh, tax arbitration council. So this uh, particular council is chaired by uh, Deputy Prime Minister, Minister of Economy and Finance. So uh, you can submit this letter to the um, Ministry of Economy and Finance after obtaining your letter. The uh, working team of this council will review your uh, document. They will uh, hold a meeting. They will uh, uh, review everything similar to litigation bureau. And then after that, they will uh, come up with the, the, the decision 
whether they uh, 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 agree to remove reassess tax or they agree to uh, keep some and remove some or uh, something like that. So when they uh, issue the uh, their decision, in some case again, uh, some taxpayer agree, some taxpayer disagree. Uh, but in uh, from my uh, experience, uh, I never seen that the taxpayer disagree with the final decision of tax arbitration council. However, if in the future, uh, if some taxpayers still disagree with the final decision of tax arbitration council, they are allowed to submit their protest to the court, which is in practice, I can say that I never seen this uh, before. So uh, <clears throat> this is the um, whole process of the uh, tax audit. And uh, I would like to clarify that it is not uh, for all companies to go through this tax audit process because some company, they agree at the beginning that they uh, made a mistake and uh, underpaid tax. So they, when the GDT issue notice tax reassessment, they agreed, they agreed to pay tax at that uh, stage. So they don't have to submit an uh, audition letter. In some other case, the taxpayer agreed to pay uh, a tax and other penalty based on the revised uh, notice of tax reassessment. And in some cases, they agree at a litigation uh, bureau stage, or in the rare case, they uh, agree to pay the tax at the tax arbitration council uh, stage. So, uh, uh, again, uh, it does not mean that uh, all company or taxpayers are required to go through all uh, this uh, uh, process. Uh, it depends on uh, uh, the case. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so now you already uh, uh, know uh, what are the uh, types of uh, tax audit and the uh, process of uh, the uh, tax uh, audit. And the next one is uh, regarding the penalties. You might have a question, uh, if I underpaid tax, so what kind of uh, penalties uh, I will uh, pay to the uh, GDT or the tax authority? So under the Cambodian law on taxation, uh, the penalties for the tax audit process depends on uh, the uh, uh, your, your, your company uh, compliance with the tax law. So if your company is considered committing a uh, negligent uh, for your tax declaration, you will subject to the additional tax, which is penalty at 10% and interest on the underpaid tax at 1.5% per month. So the question is uh, when uh, do uh, when uh, do I consider uh, as uh, uh, committing negligence? So under the Cambodian uh, tax law, if you under uh, pay tax at ten percent of the uh, total amount of tax payable to the GDP, you are considered committing negligence. For example, uh, you under the Cambodian tax law you are required to pay a uh, withholding tax of uh, 100 US dollar. However, you underpaid the withholding tax 9 US dollar during a uh, tax return uh, declaration. So in this case, you are considered committing negligence. So in the tax audit process, the tax auditor will impose uh, additional tax, which is a penalty at 10% of the uh, underpaid tax, which is nine in our example. Uh, the second case is a serious negligence. So uh, under the tax law, you are considered committing serious negligence when you underpaid tax of uh, above 10% uh, of the uh, tax to, uh, to be paid under the tax law. Uh, in our example, uh, withholding tax again, you are supposed to pay a withholding tax 100 US dollar to the uh, uh, tax uh, authority. However, you under 
you you paid only uh, uh, 80 US dollar so you under paid 20 so you under paid 20 here mean uh, you under paid uh, 20 percent of the total tax amount payable to the uh, GDT under the tax uh, regulation or withholding tax uh, regulation so in this case you are considered committing serious negligence. So the uh, additional tax which is penalty will be imposed at 25% of the underpaid tax amount. And the interest will be imposed at 1.5% uh, per month under the uh, tax on uh, tax on, uh, number 2700. And the third one is uh, regarding the unilateral tax reassessment. So, uh, under the uh, tax audit practice and law on uh, taxation, the GDT also mentioned about uh, uh, unilateral tax reassessment. So, the uni unilateral tax reassessment no normally will be uh, imposed if the taxpayer is found uh, to commit tax avoidance. So, in that practice, if you take a look at that practice, you will see that uh, when you are considered uh, committing a tax avoidance. So <clears throat> uh, the tax avoidance uh, happen when uh, you do not uh, maintain uh, accounting record or you maintain a false or fake uh, financial uh, uh, statement or accounting record and you do not cooperate with the tax auditor during the uh, tax audit process meaning you do not submit uh, the requested document required by the tax auditor. You do not meet with the tax auditor as requested by them. So you do not cooperate. So in this case, you are considered committing tax avoidance and you will be subject to unilateral tax reassessment with the uh, penalty rate at 40% on the uh, underpaid tax and the interest is 1.5% per month. The last one is abstract, abstraction of tax law implementation. So for this, this kind of penalty is uh, 2 million if you are found to uh, commit uh, abstraction of uh, tax law implementation. If you take a look at the law on taxation of Cambodia, uh, in particular one article, uh, the GDT also mentioned uh, when you are considered a subset of uh, tax law. So I can give you one uh, a few examples for this one. Uh, you are considered abstracting uh, implementation of tax law when you do not uh, maintain a proper accounting record. You do not uh, issue the invoice based, uh, based on the uh, tax regulation and you did not uh, declare and submit tax return on time, among other things. So uh, when you commit uh, this kind of thing, you are required to uh, pay uh, this penalty at 2 million real, which is uh, 500 US dollar during uh, the tax audit uh, process. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. So uh, now you are, uh, already uh, know uh, what type of tax audit and uh, the penalties and the tax audit process. Uh, to conduct the tax audit. So if you take a look at that broadcast, you will uh, see that uh, the purpose of uh, tax audit is to ensure the uh, transparency and effectiveness, uh, effectiveness uh, for tax uh, collection and payment. So the GT uh, try to uh, ensure the transparency. But uh, during uh, this uh, uh, process, the GT also provide you know incentive uh, or help uh, some tax payer payers who have uh, difficulty in paying the reassessed tax by allowing uh, them to pay the uh, tax liability in installment. So, uh, for example, if the reassessed tax uh, uh, amount is uh, 100,000 US dollar and you have, uh, now you 
currently you have a uh, financial difficulty so you do not have a uh, 100,000 US dollar to pay to the GDT the GDT also allows you to uh, throw this uh, amount in installment uh, uh, by uh, uh, fulfill uh, some uh, condition so in order to uh, uh, pay the uh, reassess tax uh, in installment, you are required to submit a request letter to the GDT with a supporting document like a, a latest patent tax, a notary reassessment, a financial statement, bank statement, and other document to prove that you are really in the hardship situation regarding the, the finance, uh, financial matter and also provide the detailed context and information of, uh, uh, of taxpayers or representative. And the GDT normally, they will review your uh, request and uh, check uh, and the approval based on uh, uh, the various conditions. So it means that uh, the GDT will not uh, approve every uh, request. They will uh, approve uh, on the case by case basis. So they, uh, in order to approve your request, uh, you need to complete your tax registration update with the National uh, Tax School. And the agility also analyze your financial ability to uh, settle the tax uh, liability based on your financial statement and uh, bank statement and other document. And they also review the tax uh, liability amount. Is it a significant or it is a small amount? And they also review your tech compliance status, uh, whether you have a good history regarding the compliance with tax law or you have a, a not good uh, history with uh, that uh, the compliance of tax law. And the last one is uh, installment stage. So uh, under that uh, particular uh, notification, uh, you are allowed to uh, pay the tax uh, reassess tax in installment for maximum periods of uh, three years. So for the first year, you are not required to pay uh, interest, but for the second year, you are required to pay interest for the uh, unpaid uh, reassessed tax amount uh, at the interest uh, market interest rate calculated by the GDT. And for the third year, you are required to pay additional interest at 2% per month on the unpaid uh, amount. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so uh, this is uh, the uh, very interesting uh, point for uh, taxpayer in Cambodia who, uh, who might face during uh, the tax audit process. Uh, so I provide the uh, summary of hot issue based on uh, our experience during the uh, tax audit process. The, First table, uh, the, uh, the, the first box uh, uh, in the yellow one, uh, you can see that uh, the income uh, tax return versus uh, financial statement. So normally, uh, some companies, uh, the income that they, they, they declare in the tax return is not reconciled with the financial statement. So the tax auditor normally they perform a reconciliation between the income amount in the tax return and financial statement. So if the financial statement is higher than the uh, tax return, the uh, tax auditor will uh, assume that uh, you under paid uh, uh, under declare revenue. So under declare revenue means you under declare tax on revenue, which might be uh, VAT and uh, tax on income. <clears throat> Secondly is uh, expand. So some uh, co uh, companies also uh, uh, expand, also uh, have their expand declare in the tax return is not uh, reconciled with the expand in their financial statement. So if they do not have the uh, proper clarification with enough supporting document, the GDT might uh, deem that you under declare a particular expense, for example, a uh, rental. They might cross check the rental expense in the income statement and compare to the rental expense declared in the uh, tax return. If the rental expense in the tax return is lower than the expense in the financial statement, the GDT will uh, assume that you under declare rental expense 
and you end up paid withholding tax on that uh, expense. And the third uh, issue that uh, normally the taxpayer face is uh, the capital. So some company, they uh, might inject uh, capital or they might uh, decrease capital <clears throat> without uh, register with the Ministry of uh, Commerce. So normally the tax auditor will review your balance sheet in the past year with the current year balance sheet. So if there is a changing in register capital, they will ask you to clarify uh, why there is such different. If you do not uh, uh, provide a supporting document and you did not register that uh, uh, increase or decrease in capital with the Ministry of Commerce, the utility or uh, the tax auditor might assume that uh, you under uh, uh, declare income or you uh, might obtain loan as your capital or uh, other thing and they might impose a relevant tax uh, for, for this one. That's why you need to be careful uh, with your registered capital to ensure that uh, if there is fluctuation of capital, you need to register with the uh, uh, Ministry of Commerce or if you uh, there is a, a fluctuation of capital, uh, but uh, the amount is still uh, below the registered capital, you need to uh, repair supporting document with a proper justification uh, to explain uh, the uh, tax auditor in the future. And the uh, uh, next point is uh, regarding retained earnings. So uh, uh, if your company uh, is not audited uh, by uh, external auditor or you declare tax on income based on audited uh, financial statement, for the retained retain earning uh, issue might be uh, no. But uh, for some other companies, they declare uh, annual income tax based on unaudited financial statement while they submit audit report to the uh, auditor, tax auditor for review. So the retained earning is uh, different. So when the uh, retained earning is uh, different, the tax auditor might uh, uh, ask you uh, the question and they might assume that uh, you might under declare income or they might uh, uh, assume that uh, you uh, pay dividend to your uh, shareholder uh, after they uh, see the fluctuation of retained earning uh, between the annual tax return with your uh, audit report or with all the last year retained earning with the current year retained earning. And the next one is income collected on behalf or reimbursement. So this issue is uh, mainly uh, about the logistic company. The logistic company, uh, some international logistic company might uh, collect uh, the income on behalf of the uh, parent company. So uh, when they uh, collect uh, the income on behalf of the uh, parent company, the uh, tax auditor might uh, assume that uh, this is their income and impose tax reassessment on this uh, particular issue. And they also might reimburse from their uh, customer during their service. For example, they might pay uh, uh, a custom duty, uh, THC fee, low, low fee on behalf of the customer. And after that, they uh, reimburse that uh, 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 expense from their uh, customer. So when they reimburse, uh, the tax auditor might uh, uh, assume that this uh, reimbursement is uh, the uh, logistic company uh, in CAM. And the next one is related party transaction. So as you are aware, in uh, October 2017, the GDT introduced the transfer pricing rule in Cambodia. So after that uh, Prakash uh, introduction of that uh, TP rule, uh, the uh, taxpayer normally faces a lot of issues if they have a uh, a related party, uh, party transaction because if they do not have a proper enough supporting document to prove that their uh, related party transaction were done at arm's length, the GDT will uh, reassess uh, tax uh, on, on that uh, transaction. And the next one is director salary. So uh, uh, this kind of uh, uh, issue still uh, faced by some uh, tax uh, payer in Cambodia. Uh, at uh, some tax brands still uh, reassess director salary uh, because some some uh, director who is the owner of the company 
uh, do not uh, receive the uh, salary from the company because they are shareholder. But the, uh, from the tax auditor point of view, when you are the director of the company, you are supposed to receive the uh, salary and subject to tax on salary in Cambodia. And the next one is regarding cost of goods sold. So uh, it is uh, mainly the issue of the uh, trading company and the uh, manufacturing company. Normally, the tax auditor compare the cost of goods sold that you declare in the annual income tax return with your income statement. So if the two amounts are not reconciled, the GDT may uh, uh, disallow some expense or may uh, assume that you under uh, declare revenue in your uh, 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 annual tax uh, declaration and impose a uh, uh, relevant tax. The last one is improper accounting record and supporting documents. This is uh, the issue of the taxpayer who has a poor internal uh, control. So when you do not prepare a good uh, proper financial statement, for example, you do not uh, uh, adopt a group basis for maintaining uh, your uh, accounting record, or you do not uh, recognize expense or income in the correct period, and you do not maintain a supporting invoice for your expense, uh, this is a big issue for you uh, uh, during the tax audit process because uh, under the Cambodian tax law, the burden of proof, meaning uh, if you disagree with the tax auditor tax reassessment, you need to provide evidence to prove that uh, their reassessment is not correct. So if you do not prepare proper accounting record with proper supporting document, you will face this issue in the future tax audit. And uh, Chantal will uh, uh, go uh, in detail regarding the uh, proper accounting record and the uh, Cambodian uh, uh, regulation uh, in the next uh, session. And the next hot issue is uh, regarding the gray area. Uh, if you experience with the tech uh, uh, process or tech declaration in Cambodia and tax audit process, you will uh, uh, know that um, some particular regulation is still not clear whether this is subject to tax or not. And during, I can say that it's not uh, only in Cambodia, but other countries also face the same issue that uh, some particular tax regulation are not clear. So from tax auditor point of view, they try to uh, uh, collect tax. So their interpretation is different from the taxpayer. The taxpayer point of view is try to uh, uh, sell or reduce the tax expense. So they tend to interpret that uh, that particular gray area, uh, applying that uh, that particular transaction is not subject to tax. So this is also the uh, common and hot issue faced by the taxpayer during the tax uh, audit as well. And the next one is regarding the uh, industry that uh, have uh, the uh, tax audit, uh, big tax audit problem in Cambodia. The first one is uh, airlines. So uh, if you are from the airlines company, you can say you can see you 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 might see that uh, there is a lot of uh, argument uh, between uh, you and the tax auditor uh, regarding the uh, recognition of income on air ticket and the uh, reassessment basis for specific tax and uh, tax on income on the sale of uh, air ticket. And uh, now the uh, GDT has not issued uh, uh, the guideline or the uh, regulation for the airline industry yet. So it's still the uh, hot uh, issue during the tax audit process for this kind of uh, industry. Secondly, logistic company, uh, it's the same to uh, airlines. There is no particular clear uh, guidelines on the logistic company uh, yet regarding the income collected on behalf of the parent company and the reimbursement uh, uh, collected from the customer, uh, still the same uh, issue. And the uh, next one is manufacturing companies. Uh, from my experience, uh, the tax audit process for the manufacturing company also uh, posts a lot of uh, tax issue. If the taxpayer did not uh, prepare proper accounting record 
and uh, have a uh, supporting uh, dog human. And the last one is the group companies, meaning uh, you are, your company and uh, is, is from the, a big group uh, of companies. For example, the parent company is in uh, the US and the parent company set up various subsidiary in various uh, countries, uh, in Cambodia, in Thailand, in Japan, and some other countries. So when those group, group company have transaction between each other, they are required to do that transaction at uh, arm's length, meaning they have to comply with a transfer pricing rule that I just mentioned uh, a moment ago. So uh, the last box is uh, when, how, now you are aware of the hot issue in, uh, during the tax audit process, how you uh, mitigate the risk and how you uh, uh, reduce the uh, tax exposure uh, during the tax audit process. First one, like I mentioned, you are required or you should uh, maintain proper accounting record. If you are not uh, uh, required to have your financial statement audited by external auditor, at least you have to adopt a group basis, a simple group basis uh, for your accounting record. And secondly, you should uh, maintain supporting document for every uh, transaction that you do. Uh, with your customer, with supplier, particularly with your related party. And the next one is good tax planning, meaning uh, as the investor, when you want to invest in particular project, you have to uh, properly uh, plan uh, your uh, investment. Uh, one of the planning is the tax. Besides financial uh, planning, you need also to plan your tax uh, properly. Uh, you need to uh, 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 estimate or you need to review whether there is any tech risk and in, uh, yeah, in your uh, uh, project. So if there is a tech risk, how can you uh, uh, cope with that uh, tech risk or how to mitigate uh, that uh, tech risk? This is the uh, tech uh, planning. And the last one is professional tech advisor. So uh, like uh, our firm, we are the professional uh, firm that uh, provide the uh, tax consulting service and compliance service to the uh, customer for their tax declaration as well as uh, the tax planning. So uh, in the future, if you uh, have any uh, uh, issue during the tax audit process or uh, during the, uh, uh, your investment uh, project, you can uh, uh, engage us uh, to uh, provide the uh, consulting or the assistance uh, in your tax audit process and uh, uh, tax planning as well. So uh, I think uh, that's all uh, for my part and I am very uh, thankful for all uh, participants. Uh, I think uh, 500 uh, participants, a big number, uh, for your time uh, uh, attending this uh, webinar. So I would like to give uh, the floor to uh, Chantal, who will uh, say about uh, uh, proper accounting record and the uh, Cambodian regulation. Thank you. So thank you a lot, Mr. Vida, for this sharing on the update and also the walkthrough. It is really useful to be aware of. Well, before we get going, I want to remind our audience again, if you have any question for Mr. Vida, please drop it in the chat box. Our team will facilitate on collecting them. And once again, I want to remind you that our participant will receive the feedback form. And after you complete it, you will receive the presentation slide. So thank you so much for the next agenda. I would like to welcome Mr. Son Chanto. He will walk us through the topic, proper accounting record. Please welcome. Thanks. So um, let me say thank you to um, Berea and also thank you to Ji um, uh, good, uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, my name is Chan Tal from um, FII and Associates. Um, thank you so much for joining us today uh, with this uh, webinar. I hope that you are doing good and staying safe. Um, Today, I'm really happy and excited to be here. 
Um, so um, today I will talk about proper accounting records. But uh, before we start our topic, please uh, let me say thank you to Tipa um, who helped support this webinar happens and arrange all the necessary platform for the sharing today. So today we're talking about proper accounting records. Um, in our language, we call it uh, and if we talk about proper accounting records, it is also important to talk about tax compliance. Uh, so we will go through all of this together today. Next slide, please. So our agenda today is to talk about criteria uh, for improper accounting records and tax compliance and incentives that you will receive as a taxpayer if you receive those certificates from the GDT. And the last one is that we will talk about how you will get those certificates from the GDT. We'll talk about the application process and procedures and how you can get it. Okay, next slide, please. So in the broadcast issued by the MOEF, uh, it defined the definition of accounting records. So accounting record refers to sets of accounting records and documentation in accordance with the requirement of the GDT and accounting standards determined by the MOF. Um, um, so as you can see, uh, account records by definition under the broadcast uh, refers to not only the records and documentation that determine under the accounting standards of the MOF, it also refers to the accounts and documentation as required by the GDT. Um, this may refer to, for example, um, loan agreements, um, VAT invoice, um, you issue the VAT invoice as determined by the VAT regulations. Uh, you submit all notifications to the GDT. So all of these can be said that as account records for tax perspective. So if you talk about proper accounting records, we need to look first at what is improper accounting records. So under the broadcast um, by the MOEF, it has outlined certain criteria to determine on improper accounting records. One of those is that if you do not keep accounts and documentation as required by the tax law or by the accounting standard. And the second one is if you do not issue sale invoice under these four articles, articles 77, 78, 79, and 98 of the law on taxation. Um, if you look briefly at these articles, uh, it is about VAT invoice criteria, the keeping of all sales invoice that you have issued, and the keeping of all invoice that you have received from your suppliers, and also the requirements to keep um, books of accounts and other documentation for submission to the GDT upon request. And the third one is if you conduct serious negligence as stated under Article 126 of the Law on Taxation, and that means if you're underpaid taxes, are more than 10%. And the first one is if you engage in tax evasion as um, described by Virea earlier in, in his, uh, his presentation, and the last one is if you do not have audited financial reports in case you generated uh, annual turnover more than um, $500,000. So these are the criteria for improper accounting records. So uh, if in case that you do not commit any of these things, uh, you cannot say automatically to your staff that you have maintained proper accounting records. So 
in order to confirm that you have maintained proper account records for tax law under the GDT, you will have to submit application to the GDT. And the question is, why do we need to do that? So we will answer that in the next slide. So next slide, please. So, like I say, if we do not commit any of those criteria under improper account records, we cannot say to ourselves and claim to ourselves that we have maintained proper account records and enjoy tax incentive under the tax law. So the tax law say that if you have maintained supporting records, you will be exempted from minimum tax. And what it means is that if you generate a tax loss in certain years, um, you will have your repayment of tax on income as credit to be used in the next TOI. So that means when you calculate your TOI, you do not have to calculate your minimum tax. So that is the incentives that you will have under the proper accounting records. So like I say, to, to, to confirm that you have maintain proper account records, you will have to submit the application to the GDT and the GDT will review your applications. Um, uh, the application will, uh, will valid for two years. So just in case that the GDT issue the response to you saying that you do not have maintained proper account records, the tax, uh, the, the law say that you, you can request another application to the GDT to review their decision again to see if it is correct or not. So if let's say you, you submit the application to the GDT to request for confirmation that the company have maintained proper account record and the GDT says that you do not have maintained proper account records, then you can request again to the GDT. So um, next slide, please. So, um, like I say, when we talk about proper account records and improper account records, we also need to talk about tax compliance. So, these are the criteria under the tax law that determine um, criteria in order to judgment if a taxpayer has um, complied with the tax regulation. There are 12 um, judgments criteria and total point is 20. So I will not go through all of these um, in detail today. Uh, but if um, you have, if your total score is between 16 and 20 out of these 12 criteria, you will be considered as um, goal compliance. So if your total score between uh, 11 and 15, uh, you will consider as silver compliance. And if the score is between 1 to 10, um, you'll be uh, consider as branch plan at the red. So, uh, next slide, please. So, why do we need to request to the GDT to provide us the status of either gold compliant, uh, silver, or bronze? Because if you receive those certificates, you will receive lots of incentive under the tax law. And for gold certificates, um, the incentives are that you will, you can request a VAT refund up to $125,000 without no VAT audit. Um, this audit will be exempted. Limited audits will be exempted. Comprehensive audit will be conducted once every two years. So for those of you who have um, experienced tax audit, like for the Edmondson's and also you know how resource consuming it is. So you, you should know that how important it is to have gold compliance certificate or silver compliance certificate from the GDT. So how can you get the, this gold certificate from GDT? Um, the answer is that you can get gold certificate from the GDT uh, for two options. One is that the GDT will issue to you directly um, like they did in 2017 or you can request it to the GDT to give it to you through applications. And the certificates will, will be valid for two years. And the incentive under silver certificates, um, when you score between 11 to 15 points, 
Um, the incentives is that you can request a VAT refund up to $15,000 without no VAT audit. Um, you, uh, desk audit will be exempted. Uh, limit audit will be conducted once a year. Comprehensive uh, will be conducted once every two years. And uh, you can request this certificate, I mean, silver certificate from the GDT upon your request. And the same as gold certificate, the validity is for two years. So these are the incentives under the compliance certificate issued by uh, the GDT. Um, for a bronze certificate, um, when you score between one to 10, bronze certificate will, will not enjoy these um, incentives. It will be the same as normal companies that do not have certificate from GDT. So um, next slide, please. So, um, I think uh, that that's all for me for proper account records and also um, tax compliance. So uh, our last slide here is about our contacts. So just in case you have any questions um, or have need any assistance, uh, you can uh, contact to our partner, um, managing partner and CEO, Bong Sida, and Bong Chan Thorn, our partner, and Bong Maras, our director on assurance. So if you have any assurance questions and need any assistance in this service, you can contact these three people. And if you need any assistance on telecom accounts, you can contact our managing partner, um, Bong Kim Hin, or if you have any issues related to business and finance and everything, you can contact our group business development director, Bong Lina. Or just in case you have any questions on tax, especially on proper account records and also tax compliance and other words like tax audit, you can contact to our managing partner, Bong Bidai, or you can contact directly to us, to Bidai or me, which we have provided our details in our slides. So again, um, thank you so much, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for um, joining us today and really appreciate your time and attention. And um, please feel free to um, ask us any question and we will try our best to answer your question. So again, thank you so much. Um, please, uh, I wish you the best of luck and stay safe uh, in this COVID pandemic. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Tanto, for this practical tools that you have shared with us. So they are really useful for our participants today. Believe that our audience has so many questions for our speaker to clarify. So, as our time is so tight, I want to give this floor to Mr. Vedia and Mr. Chantol to address participant questions in this Q and A section. So, please welcome Mr. Vedia. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Yong, for uh, let me uh, in again. So uh, I have uh, received uh, a lot of questions uh, for the uh, tax uh, audit uh, plan. The first one is uh, in case there is a mistakenly over on over declaration in profit, will it be concerning issue from tax authority? I think uh, for this one, when you over declare profit, meaning you over declare tax. Uh, on income. So the over declare a profit here might arise from uh, uh, over declare revenue. So when you over declare revenue, mean you over declare VT, you over declare 1% repayment, and you over declare a tax on income. In this case, if you have a proper supporting document, you can request uh, the GDT for uh, to a month your uh, tax return and requesting the uh, overpaid tax as your tax credit. In other case, you over declare profit. In some case, you, you might uh, uh, I think over declare, yes, I think that that's it for, for, for this question. Uh, you might over, uh, over uh, declare income. So uh, in, in conclusion, if you over declare profits, you over declare tax, and uh, this, uh, there is no issue from uh, the tax authority. But uh, in order to claim back the uh, overpaid tax, you need to submit a, a letter uh, amending your tax return and requesting the uh, tax credit for the overpaid tax. 
and by providing the uh, sufficient supporting document for them. The second question is uh, for tabs of text audit, why not classified by desk audit, limit audit, competency audit, and why classified by desk and site visit audit? Uh, this is new for me. Uh, this is the uh, based on the tech uh, regulation. So uh, uh, the classification that I put in the slide is based on the practice on tax audit number 270 issued by the uh, uh, Ministry of Economy and Finance. So it, it is uh, mentioned in the uh, regulation. The third one, do tax authority conduct computer-based uh, audit? Uh, as you are aware, uh, the GT has just uh, introduced the e-filing uh, system in Cambodia. So uh, for the time being, uh, honestly, we are not aware uh, how the GT conduct the tax audit for the tax return that was submitted uh, in the e-filing uh, system. Uh, how they extract the tax return? <coughs> Is it... Uh, and 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 how how they review uh, we we are not aware about uh, this uh, as well but uh, i think because uh, uh, the GDT adopt the e filing system in the future it may be they they also conduct the tax audit uh, in their system as well uh, reviewing the tax return in the e filing system but for the time being they still review the uh, hard copy that the tax uh, payer submitted to them Next question, uh, how long does it normally take for limited tax audit and comprehensive tax audit? Uh, for this one under the uh, broadcast, um, uh, tax audit broadcast, it normally takes uh, up to six months uh, if the uh, completed uh, document and information were submitted to the tax auditor. Next one, um, after finish the tax audit by the GT, how long uh, the GDT will come again for the next audit. As my experience after finished tax audit, they will come again after two or three months for the next uh, audit period. So the this is a, a this question regarding the audit program uh, of the GDT, and uh, we I I cannot generalize that uh, when the GDT uh, conduct uh, the tax audit again, it uh, based on the internal uh, program of the GDT. But uh, from my understanding, the GDT set up the uh, audit uh, tax audit program based on the risk of the taxpayer, the risk of incompliance. So the GDT normally uh, uh, evaluate uh, your company uh, with uh, how compliant your company is. So if you are not uh, very compliant, the GDT will uh, classify you as a high risk taxpayer and they will conduct the tax audit very often on your uh, companies. Uh, did you experience in late uh, side visit or let a uh, final like the uh, case from the tax auditor, both limited competency audit? Is there a law of procedure that owner of the company can understand this and evaluate the performance of tax auditor? So, um, for us, we have uh, many, many ongoing uh, uh, tax audit process. And at the same time, we also have the new tax audit uh, process. And also we uh, close many uh, uh, some uh, tax audit uh, process uh, for our clients uh, recently. And for the procedure of tax audit, you can uh, refer to the tax audit broadcast number 270. Uh, for the uh, process, the uh, tax or tax audit, uh, you can uh, refer to that uh, particular uh, broadcast. And also there is another broadcast, if I'm not mistaken, uh, regarding the uh, procedure for submission of the objection letter, which is uh, number 1470, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, in that particular broadcast, you will see uh, how you submit the objection letter what will be the uh, content and supporting document of the audition letter. And for the evaluation of the tax auditor work, uh, I'm not so sure what uh, do you want uh, to uh, ask, uh, but I, I think uh, you, you want to evaluate whether the tax auditor uh, tax reassessment is uh, uh, correct or not. 
So uh, that's why uh, we are here. We help you to uh, evaluate the tax reassessment of the tax auditor whether they reassess uh, their reassessment based on the tax law or not. And we also uh, assess your uh, compliance data whether you paid tax or not and you have a supporting document or not. So to win the uh, tax uh, reassessment, uh, we need to evaluate your compliance data and the supporting document. If you have proper supporting document to prove that you did not uh, uh, under declare uh, tax, uh, the GDT will remove that uh, uh, tax reassessment from the notary tax reassessment. And the next one is um, if the law on taxation, I think uh, this question is quite long and uh, it's not uh, regarding to the um, uh, tax audit. Uh, I, for, for, for this one, uh, uh, this question is that um, the participant want to ask uh, in Cambodia, there is a threshold for a taxpayer to uh, declare tax and uh, why uh, the uh, tax law require the company in Cambodia to uh, withhold withholding tax on the service payment from the uh, supplier in Cambodia whose income is below the threshold uh, mentioned in the tax law. Uh, uh, the participant also mentioned about personal income tax in Cambodia. I can uh, make a quick uh, response that uh, currently in Cambodia, there is no uh, particular uh, regulation on personal income tax yet. And the threshold, normally uh, the GDT uh, provide that a threshold for the registration or classification of the uh, taxpayer in Cambodia or only. It's like a small taxpayer, a medium taxpayer and like taxpayer. But for the individual uh, businessman who, whose income below that a particular threshold, are also required to pay tax in Cambodia. And this is uh, the requirement under the uh, Cambodian tax uh, regulation. So uh, the non-resident taxpayer and the individual businessman whose income is below the threshold are required to pay tax via the withholding uh, uh, process, meaning when uh, the company or taxpayer do the business with those guys, they are obliged to uh, withhold the tax from them. And uh, this is uh, uh, based on the uh, tax regulation. And uh, yeah. yes. I, I have a few questions from our audience on proper account records. So uh, please let me try yeah. to clarify uh, yes. questions. So question number one. Could I please clarify if the exemption on limited and comprehensive audits for gold and silver compliance status means that the gold and silver taxpayer are permanently exempted from the audits? All audits are just deferred as later dates. So, um, gold compliance certificates and also silver compliance certificates are valid for two years. So, if you receive a gold certificate for 2020 and 2021, so that means that financial year 2020 and 2021 will be exempted from limit audits and also test audit. It does not mean that you will be exempted forever. It's only exempted for the two years that stated in the compliance decades. And um, another question if The company received gold certificate can be considered that the company is having a proper accounting records. Um, this one, um, I can say that if you receive gold certificate, you cannot be entitled to have maintained proper accounting records. As you can see in the criteria for determining um, tax compliance, gold, silver, and bronze, there is a uh, there is one criteria about maintain proper account records, so that is for two 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 points as I remember. And if you receive and if you receive a score between sixteen and twenty, uh, you'll be considered as gold. So that means even if you do not maintain, even if you do not obtain the scores on that criteria, uh, maintain proper account records, you can also be considered as gold status. 
And in practice, we have seen that certain companies have received gold compliance certificate from the GDT, but they cannot receive um, proper accounting records because these two incentives are provided separately and that forecast um, for gold status you receive uh, you will be accepted on tax audit, VGD fund, something like that. And proper accounting, you will, re you will receive incentive and the minimum tax exemption. So the short answer is that if you have received gold status or silver status, it does not mean that you have maintained proper accounting records. You need to request to the GDT separately. And... Um, Another one is how to record properly on account receivable for insurance broker company match with tax declaration. And uh, another one is based on law, they require proper account record that require bookkeeping, booking and accrual, for example. But for tax declaration by filing the kind invoice, we can see that this we got different. So when the tax auditor use method to compare between financial statement and tax declaration, there must be different. So do you think that taxpayer can debate on this? So I will combine these two questions together. Um, our, our law says that we need to prepare our book being based on accruals, which we adopt um, accounting standard determined by the MOF. So it will be on accruals basis. So um, sales incomes, either brokers or insurance, um, we will recognize or issue the invoice based on actual sales that we have. But for um, recording perspective on ARs and collections, it would be different. For example, um, you sell this insurance um, premium to one company in um, Thursday and in today. Um, so, but they will pay you the money in the next week or next two weeks. So it will be different. And another point is that um, if you compare between monthly tax return and annual tax return, of course it will be different. You cannot compare between total purchase during the year that you declare on a monthly tax basis to actual expense that you will record under the income statement for TOI perspective. For, this, for example, let's say you buy an asset, you buy a computer, you buy a car, so you will record as you purchase the car, for example, let's say in April or in May, but uh, you will declare in your e-filing return for money tax, you will cash, you, you buy the car and you buy the computer. But in your records for financial statement, you will record it as a set and you will claim depreciation, not in, not expenditure, but you will claim depreciation in income statement. So they will not be the same and uh, they will apply to certain expand also like accruals and provisions so it would be different um, so we can justify this to the third authorities um, when we when we have the audit so um, the answer is very clear you can debate it you can prove it you can explain to the third authority and these issues are not really complicated um, if you have supporting document then you can prove to the third authority and that's quite easy Okay, um, I think that's that's all for me from that for now because uh, that is the question I have. Uh, if you have any questions on on tax audit, then you can you can continue with you. Okay, uh, thank you, Tom. And uh, now uh, we have uh, also other question regarding the uh, tax audit. Uh, the next question: is If um, my company have a gold status certificate and qualify accounting a record. Uh, so what kind of GT audit we can that uh, to my company? So uh, based on uh, uh, my uh, uh, sharing and uh, the uh, uh, Cambodian tax regulation, if you have the gold certificate, you are exempt from the uh, tax audit and limited tax. And the uh, comprehensive tax audit will be conducted uh, in uh, every two years. Uh, for gold, next question for gold certificate. Let's say company A get gold certificate in 2021 for the period 2019-20. Uh, the last comprehensive audit was uh, 2018. Uh, my question if in 2019 and 2020 is exempt from comprehensive audit. Uh, only uh, 2021 will start again. Uh, so uh, 
when you obtain the gold certificate, uh, your company is not exempt from the comprehensive tax audit. But the thing is that the tax auditor or the GDT will conduct comprehensive tax audit in every two years. So uh, 2019 and 2020 will be uh, subject to uh, uh, a comprehensive tax uh, audit, maybe in 2021. And then for 2021 and 2022, we'll be subject to comprehensive tax audit in 2023. Uh, this is what uh, that uh, incentive uh, means. It does not mean you are exempt from comprehensive tax audit. You are only exempt from this and limited tax audit only. Uh, the next one is uh, a company have, uh, this is uh, not uh, really uh, relevant to the uh, tax audit. A company have a spare room in the building and they let their shareholders use it for accommodation, including water and electricity. And the shareholder also not taking any salary. My question is, uh, is there any uh, risk for this uh, situation? So uh, the risk here also depends on uh, whether on the uh, business objective of your company as well. If your company is a uh, condominium, and you rent the uh, condominium room to uh, the uh, customer. So provision of such a room to shareholder is considered a taxable supply, which is subject to 10% uh, 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 VAT, 1% repayment, and uh, TOI. However, if uh, your uh, company is, uh, is not uh, a real estate company who has a condominium or uh, accommodation building, uh, when you provide uh, such a uh, spare room to the uh, uh, shareholder, I think uh, under the uh, new uh, tech on income practice number 098 uh, issued in 2020, there is one particular uh, article mentioning about a taxable income. When you provide the room uh, 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 as accommodation for free to uh, your staff or to the third party, uh, such a free room is considered uh, the taxable income of the uh, company. So uh, this may uh, subject to a VAT and 1% uh, repayment and a uh, 20% TOI as well. And next one about absent letter 30 days. It is, is it uh, 30 days from the company received or on the date on the letter? and the 30 day is working day or normal, normal day. So um, the 30 days here is for the 30 day after you receive the uh, notary assessment, not the date of the notary assessment. So when your staff uh, or you collect the notary assessment, you have to be careful with the signing date of uh, receiving the notary assessment. And that date will be the date that you have to count for 30 days, uh, uh, which is the deadline of the submission of objection letter. Based on the uh, broadcast number, if I'm not mistaken, uh, 1470, uh, in that particular broadcast, the deadline for submission of objection letter is 30 working days. But for the new uh, tax on audit broadcast issue in uh, 2019, uh, the GDT mentioned only 30 days. So uh, conservatively, uh, the, the deadline should be uh, count for 30 days uh, rather than uh, 30 working days under uh, the old uh, uh, broadcast uh, 1470. Uh, based on broadcast uh, 270, there would be not audited file at the same period, right? Uh, what about the uh, investigation team or the RSA and comprehensive camp to do the audit at the same period, issue the tax assessment again while the notification of investigation issue uh, first. Based on your experience, could you please kindly advise if the taxpayer can challenge and where the comprehensive tax audit reassessment since their notification issue later than one month of investigation uh, team? as well as type of tax audit as same like salary withhold tax or on service. So uh, this question regarding the uh, uh, tax audit, which is conducted on the same period and uh, the tax reassessment 
uh, imposed by two different uh, tax audit team, which is from a uh, limited tax audit and the other one is from a uh, uh, comprehensive tax audit. Uh, like I uh, mentioned in uh, during the sharing, uh, if you your company does not have the uh, gold certificate or silver certificate, your company will be subject to tax audit uh, twice, uh, which is limited tax audit and comprehensive tax audit on the same period. For example, 2020. So in 2020, you might subject you might be subject to limited tax audit and the tax auditor reassess a uh, withholding tax on uh, rental, for example. And then later on, the comprehensive tax auditor come, they will also uh, review your uh, uh, or conduct tax audit on your company for 2020. And they also might find, find, find out that your company and the declare uh, withholding tax on uh, rental. So they will check if you already paid uh, tax reassessment for withholding tax on rental, they will not reassess the same tax in uh, their uh, comprehensive tax audit process again. So in conclusion, your company will be subject to uh, tax audit twice for the same period. First one is limited tax audit, second one is comprehensive tax audit. But for the tax reassessment, will not be imposed uh, twice by the comprehensive tax audit team and limited tax audit team. So uh, there is no overlap tax uh, reassessment. And and the next question is, uh, if my company receives notification on tax reassessment, can I request the detail or breakdown calculation from the GT. Normally, in the tax audit process, uh, you uh, work with the tax aud auditor very uh, closely uh, regarding uh, uh, in the, this tax audit process. So, uh, based on my experience, before issuing five, uh, formal uh, notice tax reassessment, the uh, tax auditor normally asks uh, the taxpayer to uh, join a meeting with them. Uh, to discuss their draft uh, notice tax reassessment. So, in the meeting, they will provide a detailed reassessment of what are the items that they uh, think uh, subject to tax and you did not uh, pay tax. So, uh, they are discussing with you. But in case if uh, your company did not uh, obtain their draft uh, tax reassessment working, uh, you can uh, disagree with the uh, tax reassessment, and then you also can uh, request the tax auditor to provide detailed uh, tax reassessment uh, uh, after you are uh, submitting the audition letter. With that, I have another few questions. Okay. So, uh, yes, please let me take the time to answer those. Yes, yes, yes. So, um, for, for company with proper account record will be exempted from minimum tax. This means the company must process gold or silver tax pay certificate. So, company that declare their account record under proper account criteria in annual TI, but without gold and silver tax certificate will be subject to reassessment and MT. So, um, if the company has received proper account records from the tax authority, um, they will not reassess on minimum tax. Uh, that is the answer. So, if you receive the uh, proper account records from the GDT, uh, even though you do not have gold or silver certificate, the tax authority will not conduct reassessment on minimum tax because under the tax, it will be exempted. But you need to be clear on the time, I mean, on the tax year, because in the proper account records, um, like I say, um, in the tax law, uh, it will be valid for two years. So only those years that stated in the proper account records that cannot, that, that will be exempted from minimum tax. But uh, I would like to also highlight that um, the tax authority uh, will have the rights to revoke the certificates from the taxpayer 
in terms of proper accounting record certificates or gold compliance certificate or silver compliance certificate. The tax authority, they have the right to revoke those certificates. And in terms of revoking in proper, uh, in revoking proper accounting records, you, you will be penalized. I mean, uh, you'll be, um, a demand to pay penalties on that. So, um, another question. Company have partner for sell product for Cambodia and company provide commission or sale discount. So, should company has to pay before the tax and how much? So, in terms of commission, if you pay commission to a company, and if that company registered in Cambodia, and if they issue, if I mean, if they charge you on the commission with proper VT invoice, then there is no behold tax implication. But if you pay commission to an individuals or entities that do not register for tax perspective, then you will have to pay withholding tax 15% on the amount. So in terms of sale discount, it's a different story. Um, we, we, we will need to look at the nature of the sale discount, either it's cash or is it product. So it's, it's, um, it depends on the transaction to see if it is withholding tax implication or not. So um, if the owner of this question uh, do not get clear on the answer, you can contact me personally after the meeting. Okay. And um, another one is, why does the GDT always come up with reassessment every time we do a tax audit, even if it is a company that has fully complied with? So um, I think um, it, it does not always that the GDT always come up with the reassessed taxes under the reassessment. Um, we have seen lots of tax audit that comes with zero tax reassessment. And the reasons that we have that because those company really complies. And for those company that fully comply or not fully comply, it depends also on the industry that like we had mentioned and some gray areas in terms of tax law interpret, uh, interpretation by the taxpayer and also by the GDT. So these um, factors combined, it, it, it caused the um, interpretation between the tax authority and also the taxpayer. So of course it will be having a different point of view in terms of tax implication on certain transactions. So they will come up with the reassessment. But like Vedat mentioned, uh, taxpayers have the rights um, to object again all reassessment that the tax authority has conducted. And um, the objection will have to be supported by supporting document, evidence, and also the tax law. So to say that all the GDT will come up all way with the reassessment, um, I can say that uh, it's it's not that way. Um, we have seen company receive zero tax reassessment from the GDT. I hope I answer your question. Um, the next one is, what document needed to request for proper account of record certificate from the GDT and how to apply? Is this a separate request for tax compliance certificate? Yes, um, it is a separate request. Um, you need to request separately between proper account of records and tax compliance certificate. Or you can request it together, but it does not mean that when you get one, you will be entitled to two. Uh, so you can combine the application to request for proper account records and tax compliant. But again, it does not mean that if you have proper account records, you will entitle to gold status or silver status. Or if you have gold status or silver status, it does not mean that you will entitle to have maintained proper accounting records. So you will need to request to the GDT for both of them. And for the documentation in, in terms of the submission, um, there's lots of questions, a uh, lot of documentation that we need to support and provide to the GDT. Uh, let me list a few of them. Um, VAT certificate, um, latest patent tax, 
um, certificate of incorporation issued by the Ministry of Commerce. Um, if you have audit reports, you have to provide two years audit report. You have to provide large tax return um, payment receipts for the last two years in terms of money tax and also tax on income. You have to provide certain sales invoice for the last two years also. Because, like I said, they will, they will, the certificate will last for two years. So that is why they, they request for two years. So sample sale invoice and um, all documentations in terms of tax audit by the authority. Either it is limited tax audit or it is comprehensive audit. So if those audit already issue the notice of tax reassessment, you will need also to provide those reassessment to the tax authority. And if you have agreed in order to pay those tax reassessment that you will have to provide um, those um, payment receipts. And if you request for installment, you will have to provide um, approval from the GDT on the installments. And if you have paid those installments, you will have to also provide the receipts of those installments to the tax authority. And um, another question is, do we have any accounting software that can provide proper account records? So um, I think it's two different story here. Uh, in terms of accounting software, we have lots of accounting software that can provide accurate and also comprehensive financial reports and financial statement. You can also use QuickBooks, P3, and other very high comprehensive um, software like SAPs and everything. But in terms of software that provides accounting records, it will not, because it depends on how the people who use that accounting record. And the way that we can have proper accounting record is only to request from the GDT to confirm. So the GDT will not confirm based on the software. The GDT will confirm based on the tax declaration and based on the accounting statements and also other supporting documents that you would have from those software. So I think that there would there will no account software that can produce proper account record. All software can produce accurate and comprehensive um, reports and financial statement, but to get the certificate, it must come from the GDT. So um, this is the questions I have with that so far. So if you have any questions on tax audit, I think um, you may look at it and, and then try our best to answer our audience here. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Tom. Uh, so uh, we still have uh, some more uh, questions regarding the uh, tax audit. The next question is, um, is there a list or a kind of all decided tax case that went to tax arbitration council or court together with the facts of the matter and uh, rulings? In many countries, uh, there are such published a kind of decided case so as guidance uh, for public knowledge and practice. So uh, in Cambodia, we do not uh, have those information. It's not uh, available for the public because um, the tax uh, audit uh, reassessment is uh, a confidential information of uh, most of companies and it may uh, affect uh, the uh, company uh, uh, reputation and also uh, uh, performance. So uh, again, in Cambodia, we, we do not have that uh, uh, document available for uh, the public. And can explain under what circumstances will be regarded as obstruction of a tax law. Like I just mentioned, um, for, for the uh, obstruction of tax law, you can refer to Article uh, 108, 128 of the Law on Taxation. There is a list of the uh, actions that consider obstruction of tax law implementation. So, uh, like I uh, uh, shared a moment ago, um, the some example of abstraction of tax law is that uh, you do not uh, uh, maintain uh, accounting record properly. You do not uh, issue the uh, tax invoice to the customer as required by the tax regulation. You maintain uh, the uh, accounting record 
all uh, the the fake uh, fake accounting record, and you uh, do not uh, provide the accounting record to the tax uh, authority as uh, requested, and uh, many uh, other things. So uh, for this one, uh, you can refer to Article 128 uh, for uh, other points. And the next question is, <clears throat> normally the tax auditor never reassess with additional tax at 10%, please advise. Uh, I can say that uh, even in the uh, tax regulation, the uh, additional tax or penalty rate um, clearly mentioned uh, at 10%, 25 and 40. But in practice, uh, the normal rate that uh, the uh, tech auditor imposed is uh, 25%. But from my experience, I also have seen the uh, enterprise audit department impose the uh, penalty at 10% as well, because the underpaid tax was very uh, 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 insignificant, very small. So if the uh, reassessed tax amount is very small, uh, there is a, a, a chance or likelihood that the tax auditor impose penalty at 10%, but in most cases, 25%. Uh, next one, if company A got tax penalty at rate of 25% on withholding tax, we hear about 1,000, but we see the abstraction 500 uh, US dollar more. Do you think the taxpayers should debate on this 500 or not? So whether you uh, object or debate against this uh, penalty on obstruction of tax law, uh, you need to understand the uh, reassessment basis from the tax auditor first. You need to check why the tax auditor imposed this uh, penalty of 500 US dollar. And if the basis uh, you think uh, the, the, the basis that the tax auditor used to impose this penalty is not uh, reasonable and it's not uh, true based on your actual circumstance, you can object to this uh, penalty by providing a proper justification as well as uh, with the uh, uh, enough supporting uh, document for this one. However, if uh, in the case that you really uh, abstract the uh, uh, implementation of tax law under Article 128, I think uh, the chance that you uh, can win in this uh, reassessment is uh, very low. So uh, in conclusion, you need to uh, uh, discuss in detail with the tax auditor on the basis that uh, they used to impose this uh, penalty. <coughs> The next question is, uh, is the tax penalty, for example, 10%, uh, 25% are imposed on the basis of individual tax having been underpaid or the total uh, underpaid amount for the reassessment of the period? Normally, uh, we it is based on the tax uh, VAT, withholding tax or uh, income tax. It's not uh, based on the uh, whole uh, uh, total amount of the attack uh, reassessment for the period. Uh, next question, what is we, what if we have expand from last year that we adjust this year with retained earning? It, is it possible to challenge for retained earning different from last year? So, uh, if there is uh, such adjustment, I think uh, normally it uh, arises from uh, audit adjustment. So if this, if such uh, adjustment uh, based on the audit adjustment, you can justify uh, to the tax auditor by providing the uh, audit report together with uh, audit uh, adjustment uh, working to the tax auditor. And from the uh, my experience, the tax auditor also accept uh, this uh, explanation as long as that adjustment is not uh, uh, imposed or post any uh, tech exposure. Next question, uh, how is income from tickets so outside of Cambodia in case of airline business uh, source? I think uh, this uh, question uh, is not uh, uh, so clear. I think for, for, for this question, 
how is income from ticket sold outside of Cambodia in case of airline business uh, source? Uh, for this one, uh, you may uh, discuss with me uh, after the webinar uh, because uh, I think uh, I need to clarify further about this question. For, for related party transaction, can the company provide free load interest of amount due from or advance to related party? For support their operation, how to avoid any tech issue related to uh, this uh, transaction. Uh, from 2014 to uh, October 2017, under the instruction uh, 151, the taxpayer are allowed, were allowed to uh, have the uh, zero interest uh, loan between a related party. But after the introduction of um, transfer pricing rule in October 2017 and subsequently the uh, Ministry of Economy and Finance also issued the practice on the rule of uh, determination of uh, interest expense and income between related party. The taxpayer in Cambodia are no longer, I mean uh, the taxpayer in Cambodia are required to uh, check the interest for the uh, loan between related party at market rate and uh, under that uh, progress the taxpayer also uh, required to have a supporting document to prove that uh, the interest that they charge between related party was at arm's length or at market rate so from that uh, we can say that uh, uh, the GDT is no longer allow uh, the uh, taxpayer to have a zero interest uh, loan between related party but if you still you can uh, justify that a uh, zero uh, interest uh, loan uh, is the market rate, you have to maintain a, a supporting document to support your uh, uh, justification. But I think uh, in reality, there is no way that uh, in the market, the bank charge zero interest for the loan to their customer. So in conclusion, I think uh, there is uh, the GDT does not allow the zero uh, interest uh, loan between related party anymore. The uh, next question: My company joined between uh, Cambodia, Thailand, and currently we have a CAO, Chief Accounting Officer, from Thailand to support accounting in Cambodia. But CAO is not subject to be a, a staff of Cambodia, our company in Cambodia support by uh, online from Thailand and Thai side not charge any fee for this support thing to company in Cambodia too. So is there any problem or not? Is sub it subject to salary tax avoidance or not? So uh, like uh, you are aware uh, under the tax on salary regulation, there is the criteria for taxpayers to uh, use to judge whether the uh, one particular person is their uh, employee and subject to tax on salary or not. So in case if uh, the CEO is not uh, uh, meet that particular condition to be the uh, staff of a uh, Cambodian entity, uh, there is no risk of uh, tax on salary avoidance. However, when the Thai entity provide the accounting support to uh, the Cambodian entity uh, under the transfer pricing uh, rule, the Thai entity is due to uh, perform the service to Cambodian entity. So when these two entities provide service to each other under the transfer pricing rule, the uh, Thai entity is supposed to charge a fee for accounting uh, service. So if the uh, GDT uh, review and uh, find out this uh, transaction, there is a risk that the GDT deem such uh, support as the uh, sale of service between related party. And the GDT might require Thai entity to charge the uh, service fee at the market uh, uh, price for this uh, support. And the Cambodian entity is required to withhold 14% withholding tax on that uh, 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 reassess or that uh, 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 service fee uh, deemed by the GDT. So this is the risk. 
the next one is uh, related to income collected on behalf in case that company have contract agreement as our income is only from commission agent fee and dock fee and we have obligation to collect on behalf uh, income on behalf by issue tax invoice under Cambodia and uh, for amount of collected income on behalf will transfer back to overseas a principal at overseas by preparing a statement of account as a reference does the auditor still can reassess on this what should we do to let the tax auditor not reassessment on that case as actual company and not get those income because we got only agency fee and the fee only based on contract agreement as principal and agency so uh, this is i think uh, this question is from our participant who is from a uh, logistic company so like i mentioned uh, during my session there is still no particular uh, tax regulation for the uh, logistic company yet uh, whether the collected uh, uh, income the income collected on behalf of the principal and will be uh, transferred back to the principal uh, subject to tax in Cambodia or not uh, there is no particular uh, rule uh, for this one uh, yet however under the current tax law when you issue the invoice for the income that you collected on behalf uh, it might be viewed that uh, that income belong to the company in Cambodia so when you issue the tax invoice you are required to charge 10% VT in that uh, invoice and uh, when you recognize uh, it as the income for VT purpose of course the uh, tax out income and a uh, prepayment out income tax also uh, 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 consider for, for this case so from uh, the tax uh, point of view, uh, when you issue invoice, it should be uh, considered your income. But from the business uh, or the company point of view, uh, it should not be the company income because uh, it's just the money that you collected and transfer back to the principal overseas. And your true income, actual income, is the agency uh, fee. So there is still, uh, you know, um, as this is the gray area and uh, uh, it is also one of the hot issue, industrial hot issue in Cambodia. The solution is that uh, I would suggest that you submit a letter to the GT requesting for uh, clarification on this uh, 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 particular issue. And you can uh, ask them, uh, uh, you can uh, provide the uh, job business arrangement in the uh, letter and uh, uh, request the GDP to provide explanation or confirmation whether that uh, income is subject to tax in Cambodia or not. Vida, I have um, three questions now. Okay, uh, okay, okay, Tom. Okay. So, question number one. Uh, our shareholders don't have salary, but we share him only dividend. But he also charged commissions from his own company when he found Glenn. So this payment should record under his salary or as commission expense when withholding tax. Um, it's quite um, out of the topics for today, but um, I think uh, we, we can try to uh, answer this question also. So, from my perspective, um, from my understanding, it really depends on the shareholders themselves because we need to know if the shareholders, as only the shareholders, or they also work for the companies. Because if they only refer clients, if, if they only refer clients to the company and they get commissions, um, I think that the tax implication is a withholding tax. But if the shareholders also works for the company, I think it will be fall under the salary um, and will be subject to salary tax. So I think that it depends on either the, the shareholder is working for the company or 
he only refers the client to the company. That is what I, 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 I think. So um, the second question, can you share some insights on how GDT matrix funds received from shareholders intended for additional share capital? But as of December uh, 31st, balance sheet date, the amendment of the M&A is not yet approved by the MOT. I come to close the part. Um, it would really depends on how long, from my perspective, it would depends on how long uh, from the time that you get the money versus how long that the MOC will get approved. And also it depends on um, supporting documents on the incomes that you receive. So if it's through banks and if from the HQs, um, you got the shareholder meetings approval say that we decide to inject the capital now, but we need to process the um, application to the MOC in order to get it approved and revise our MAAA. Uh, I think that it can explain to the GDT that it is not incomes, but actually it is capital injections by HQ and saying that we processing the MOC uh, application, something like that. But if it is very long time, let's say you get the money in Jan and you request for the MOC approvals on the change of uh, share capital in December, I think it is not, I think it's very less convincing to the GDT that this money is for, uh, for for capital injections. So if it is really takes that long times, I think um, another way is to, con to, to, to consider it as loan first. So until you get the approvals for the uh, MOC, then you will um, convert it to uh, equity. So again, it would depends on the timelines uh, between the actual date that you get the money and also the approval dates from the MOC. And the second one, it really depends on supporting uh, receipts, supporting uh, document on those funds received from the AQ. So if um, it is explainable, I think that um, the GDT will accept it. So um, again, it really depends on, on uh, how long you will get it approved from the MOC. But still, um, because as you know, um, tax audit will depends on, first of all, what types of tax audit that they are conducting. Secondly, teams that do the, do the audit. So um, because different tax auditors would have different opinions and judgments and company will have different types of risk. So, it's it's still it's it's still stand a chance that tax authority will challenge it, but it does not mean that the tax authority will impose directly tax on those transactions. It really depends on our explanation as well and with supporting document. So I would say it's case by case. I hope I have answered your questions, and if you still need further clarifications, we can discuss further on that. Um, personally, I mean, um, you can privately contact to us. Um, the third question is, um, our companies sell online products. Sometimes products are almost expired, so the client don't want to buy it. In order to reduce loss, we create a sale promotion, example, buy one, get one free. And hearing that we have to pay VT for two units, it sounds unfair. So can we avoid to pay VT for both products payment? but one unit product is okay. So um, it's quite clear from the tech perspective and based on the tax law, if you say that it is the free product, um, you will have to pay VAT on that because under the definition of taxable supply, under the tax law, taxable supply defined as one of the thing is free products 
So if you say that it's free for that, then it is automatically that you have to pay VAT on that. So um, I think that if you have in that case, um, you, you, you will need to consider different kinds of promotion schemes. Um, because in the tax law, there is no mentions on discount. You can provide a discount based on the market value of the product at the time of your selling. Because you say that it is expired, almost expired, so um, the value of those products would be uh, less um, expensive compared to the one that is just produced or something like that. So to answer your question, if you say that you buy one, get one free, yes, you will have to pay VAT on that. There is no way that you can avoid it. Otherwise, you will have underpaid tax and then the GDT will impose penalty on that. Um, but you can, just, uh, you can consider different uh, promotion schemes like um, discount or something like that. Because under the tax law, there is no mention that discount is subject to VT. So you may consider on that. And if you need further advice on how to do it, um, you can contact to us with that, me, so our partner, Wang Mirai. Okay, uh, so that's all for me, for that, uh, for now, because um, that's the questions I have. So I will look further if I have any question. Okay, uh, I think uh, we still have uh, eight uh, minutes more uh, for the question A question, and we still have uh, some uh, questions regarding the uh, tax audit. So I will uh, finish uh, answering the uh, question at uh, in uh, seven minutes. Uh, and for some other question that I did not uh, answer today, uh, you can uh, personally uh, contact us uh, by the email or, or, or the uh, phone number. So uh, the next question is uh, regarding two group companies. How do we ensure that our transaction is following arm's length? How do we prepare evidence or proof? So. Uh, under the uh, TP Prakash, uh, Prakash on transfer pricing, uh, the Ministry of Economy and Finance also mentioned about the um, what we call a TP method uh, to prove that your transaction between the related party is uh, was done at arm's length. And from tech perspective, the GDT did not uh, mention what kinds of document that you have to uh, prepare uh, and evidence to prove that uh, your uh, transaction between relative party was, was, was done at arm's length. So in practice, the best uh, uh, document that uh, you need to uh, maintain and support that uh, transaction is TP report, transfer pricing report. So transfer pricing report here uh, normally is produced by um, uh, expert team uh, who has uh, expertise in uh, uh, this area. So they will uh, study the uh, transaction and they also will uh, issue the uh, uh, report for, for, for the uh, customer. So uh, for our firm, we also uh, prepare this kind of uh, report as well. We have uh, support uh, from uh, international team who uh, has uh, many experience in uh, TP uh, study. Uh, so uh, if you need uh, to uh, produce that uh, report, we are pleased to help uh, you with this kind of work. And uh, another thing that you, uh, you might have uh, in, uh, you might have is that uh, whether it is very necessary for all companies to produce the TP report or not. I can, for me uh, personally, uh, it is based on the uh, benefit and the cost that you obtain, uh, that you uh, incur to produce the uh, report. For example, the if the amount of the transaction is not significant and the tech exposure is not uh, very high, it thought it is not necessary for you to spend a uh, thousand uh, US dollar to produce uh, that report because uh, the cost and the uh, benefit is not uh, favorable uh, for, 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 for your company. So uh, besides that uh, TP report, 
it based on the uh, kind of transaction, uh, which I cannot uh, provide the general uh, idea on that unless I need to uh, discuss with you and understand more about uh, what kind of uh, transaction that uh, you have with uh, between your related party. So I I I I, I will uh, uh, provide uh, the uh, idea after the discussion in detail. The next one is a for sole a proprietorship. Does director have a, a right to obtain salary as company staff? So uh, from from a tax uh, perspective, like I just mentioned in the uh, previous question, uh, there is the uh, condition that a particular person need to uh, fulfill in order to be considered as the uh, staff of the company and obtain the salary from the uh, company and subject to the uh, tax on salary in Cambodia. So if that uh, director uh, fulfill that a uh, particular condition, uh, he is considered the staff of uh, the uh, company and uh, he has the right to obtain the salary from the uh, company. The next question is that uh, if my company is closed and you have a tax debt, are shareholders responsible for the tax debt? Uh, because uh, the company in Cambodia normally in the form of limited uh, liability company. So the uh, debt of the company is uh, uh, should be the amount that uh, injected or the capital injected in the company. So um, it is the liability of the company. But the thing is that uh, when the shareholder of the company uh, close the company has the tax debt and do not settle that tax debt, from my understanding, the GDT will not allow that particular shareholder to register another company unless he need he settled that uh, uh, debt of the old company uh, first. However, uh, the debt is the uh, company that's uh, not the shareholder debt and uh, the limited liability uh, form. Uh, next one for medium tech payer, we, if we do not have uh, employees since the beginning, when there is limited tax audit, whether uh, they will they will deem salary or not. So uh, again, it is uh, based on your actual uh, business transaction. Uh, we need to uh, review your transaction and business arrangement first. Why there is no staff at your uh, company? So uh, we need to review that transaction first before we provide uh, uh, can provide the. Uh, uh, opinion on that. However, I can uh, provide a general example that uh, based on the audit experience, the tax auditor normally uh, reassess uh, salary of uh, staff in the company that do not have staff because uh, the tax auditor uh, view that there is no company that can be operated without staff. At least you have uh, the person who, uh, up, who maintain or operate the office. And you have the person who sign a legal document and uh, sign uh, the bank check, make the payment to the supplier. At least you have the staff. So without uh, staff from the tax auditor point of view, the company can be uh, operated. That's why in most cases, I uh, have seen that auditor reassess the uh, salary and impose tax on salary for the company that uh, do not have uh, employee. If the company does not have a proper justification with uh, enough supporting document. I think uh, the time is uh, up now. So the uh, remaining uh, question, I think uh, uh, you can uh, discuss with us uh, after the webinar uh, by our email or our uh, phone call. And uh, I also saw one of uh, some question, which is very big uh, question regarding the uh, merging of the company in Korea and uh, a company in uh, Cambodia. This is a big uh, uh, tax uh, 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 advice or tax uh, consulting work. Uh, we cannot uh, provide a very quick uh, answer to that uh, question. So uh, for that uh, merging, uh, we can uh, provide you the uh, tax consulting in uh, uh, detail.
if uh, you uh, you want us to have. So uh, again, uh, thank you for uh, everyone for participating and attending uh, this webinar again. And I would like to express my uh, thanks to the uh, Kipa and the team that uh, make this uh, webinar happen. And I wish everyone uh, all the best and uh, stay safe during uh, this uh, COVID uh, pandemic. Uh, please keep in touch. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Julia and uh, gentle. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, due to time constraint, um, I would like to apologize that um, our speaker could not uh, address all uh, your questions. So uh, please uh, feel free to uh, reach out to our uh, speaker and also um, give our secretary team uh, directly if you have uh, or you need uh, our assistance. Uh, to wrap up, uh, I would like to thank our uh, sponsor, Fee Associate and Associates uh, Co Ltd, and also thanks to uh, our speaker, Vida and Gentles, um, for uh, their sharing. Also, uh, thanks to uh, our Kipa team for their uh, setup and arrangement. Uh, once again. Thank you all for uh, your time attending our webinar uh, this morning. And wish everyone uh, stay safe and healthy. Hope uh, to see you uh, next time. Uh, thank you.